So I'm out here with Benson while he finishes up his breakfast and I wanted to do a quick reflection on our training so far and where we're at. Um, in the beginning, he came here for a very simple purpose and that was to get him to a point where he could ha safely have his feet handled and trimmed. Um, and based on his past experiences and his background, it was a bit of a challenge because what we were trying to accomplish here takes rewiring of his brain and his nervous system. And that's not an easy thing to do, and it's definitely not a process that happens quickly. Um, but my goal was to just give him a choice. He could stay and interact with us, or he could leave. And I wanted to work with him at Liberty, so he felt like he could exercise the flight response and run away from anything scary or life-threatening. And when I say this, it's not actually life-threatening, it's just how he feels. He feels like um, he's in danger, and so his body and his nervous system is going to react and respond accordingly uh, to try and save his life. His number one goal is to survive, and in the past, his human experience has been incredibly um, aversive, and he has perceived life-threatening situations so much, so he had to come up with this way to survive, and his way to survive was shutting down and uh, becoming immobilized. But the problem with that is, once something crazy and aversive and overstimulating sends the nervous system into shutdown or freeze, all of that energy gets trapped and is then released when the nervous system changes uh, or switches out of freeze. So what would happen is he would become immobile when you would halter him up or pick up his feet and then randomly all of a sudden switch out of freeze and explode. He would um, kick and bolt and just explode with all of this energy and run across the um, pen. And uh, that type of behavior is dangerous. And so I needed to change that response to something that was a little bit more manageable. And if I felt like or I felt like if I could give him the option to just run away without having to go into the shutdown, um, it would be a little bit easier to work with and, and safer. Um, so he definitely exercised his right to leave. He left a lot. He was like, this is too much. I'm just going to walk away. And so about two weeks into our journey together, he decided that... Uh, he could hang out and hear us out and uh, he really came around and started to trust us because he knew that he could leave if he wanted to and so he felt more and more inclined to stay and do and participate in this interaction uh, because he felt like we were aware of how he was feeling and like he didn't have to fight for his life um, and so that went really great we got to a point where we could handle all four of his feet completely at liberty, you know, in the farrier positions and everything, which was, like, not possible before. Um, and so that was a huge success. That was a huge change in his behavior. Um, and then we reintroduced the halter. And with the halter came all of these previously established negative associations. And so he kind of reverted back to his default responses of, you know, his, his shutdown, explosive, incredibly, like, fearful responses. And um, we were able to go slow enough and keep him under threshold that we got the first foot trimmed, which is this front left here. And uh, that went well. And then the next day we were trying for the hind right, uh, hind left, excuse me. The left side is his most comfortable side. His right side is very, he was very defensive and had this blocking issue where he just would not allow us on that side. And with approach and retreat and really trying to show him 
our awareness of his boundaries and his thresholds, we were able to get him to a point where he was comfortable enough with us being on his right side. Um, <clears throat> but we wanted to, with trimming the feet, we wanted to establish this like momentum. So we started with the easier feet first. And I don't know, that day we haltered him up and the hind left turned into a no question. And throughout the session, we couldn't change it from a no question to a yes question. He'd just gone so far over threshold, he couldn't handle it. And uh, he reverted completely back to his uh, default responses. And uh, honestly, it felt like we had just undone a month's worth of training. So I came out this morning after he's had a couple days off to kind of just be himself and um, not have anything majorly stressful or overstimulating happen to him. And I've been sitting on the ground here uh, after just brushing out his left side, which I've never really done before. Um, I brushed all the way from his withers all down his back and then I got to his haunches here and like in this area he decided that it was too much and so he just turned and calmly left. Uh, he made a little circle and then came back and presented me his right side uh, which for him is really interesting because he's very insecure about that right side and very protective over it over it and even still to this day he's very protective over that right side um, and so I just stood there and I, I wanted to go up and brush his right side but I felt like if I did I may overstay my welcome and I really didn't want to do that I wanted to stand on his right side and have him be perfectly okay with that you know like an open door and I didn't want that door to close and so I didn't do anything to make him feel you know and and it's something as little as me making a sudden movement or reaching towards him that would make him slam that door shut see even my voice is making him jump and the dogs playing over here by the trailers are making him jump and he's just he's very reactive and uh, afraid but we've come a long way and I don't feel like we've completely undone all of the training over the month because he was willing to let me brush him this morning and uh, the other day kind of picked up his feet and like, completely at liberty you know after the trim after the incident with the trim uh, while he was eating and that went perfectly fine so I have confidence in him and I have confidence in us we just need to kind of slow way down again and um, build him up to getting this trim done <laughs> which hopefully hopefully this will all come together and he'll be able to continue to count on us and have confidence because um, he's a really wonderful horse and it is so amazing to see his willingness to forgive and learn it's just any little thing that he feels like he can't handle will send him back into his default behaviors and um, that's going to take a long time to unpack and really change because we're going to have to change his mind we're going to have to convince his body that he's not in mortal danger and it, it's a complex process so so yeah we'll keep doing this because he's an incredible horse and he really deserves um, trust and I don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes